Oder man könnte auch sagen, wie bringt man Bill Gates zum Lachen? Andreas Bayer. Um, hello. Um, with this first image, I'd like to um, demonstrate the way I work, because I've been asked quite often if I'm planning intensively what I'm doing, and I say, no, I don't plan, because whenever I tend to plan things, then they go wrong. Like Friedrich Dürrenmatt once said, the harder you plan, the more intensively you get hit by fate. And so the portraits I'm going to show you, I go there, I see what you can do, bring the things together, and finally, that's the result. Like this one I did in Hong Kong, this was my hotel room. I just, well, I told the roommate not to clean, well, that, this, that was my plan. And uh, short before leaving the room, I asked Henry, the lift boy, because I thought, hmm, it would be nice to add something nice and proper to it. So lift boy, Henry, and uh, I needed more light because it was very dark, so I uh, separated the Lampenschirm, whatever the English word is, from the, <laughs> from the light bulb. So I had the Lampenschirm in my head, didn't know where to place, so I said maybe it might be nice if he could have the Lampenschirm on his head. So um, this I think I can only explain in German. And, um, This is a part of my flashlight paintings. Uh, later, I'm going to show you a little bit more of it. Um, this is simply, uh, there's no digital image, nothing. This is pure, analogously manufactured pho photography. This is an uh, homage an Lili Marleen aus der Sicht einer halb vertrockneten Champignon-Division mit dem Titel Letzter Marsch auf die Laterne. <laughs> so this was the beginning and the end of uh, the German part of my um, speech. Um, sometimes I come from Wiesbaden, sometimes I do some assignments for the Wiesbaden magazine. Um, it's published um, 550 copies uh, once or twice a year, and it is uh, also part as a supplement of the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, which is similar to be seen uh, the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung for the New York Times, Times, Le Monde ou Le Figaro, quelque chose comme ça. Um, This is the film production company, and uh, whenever I do assignment, I do different kinds of portraits on a different level. This is from inside out. So this inside, this is the way where they've got their offices, a bit like a prison, and always try to escape and see what they can do. So this to illustrate, and here I had the idea to send someone to the bakery to buy some croissants so that everybody lies there with them croissant in their mouth. These two guys do um, brand consulting, so um, they asked me what we can do, and I initially said we can go to the zoo, because what I like about the zoo is that when you look at the animals, an elephant is something totally different than a kangaroo. So if you, if you think, say, every animal is a huge company, and you take the way they look, as a sort of corporate design. It's very hard to mix them. It's very, you see them right on the spot. So, but uh, I'm not going to show you the photograph from the zoo. These are photos that also happened in the zoo or near the zoo in the cafe, because I just saw these tables and thought, well, I got another idea, so just let's go for it. And this is, this is um, inspired by Dr. Doolittle's zoo. Stoß mich zieh dich. I don't know the English expression. Um, this is von Werken, design company. They do lots of interesting stuff, and they wanted to be linked with nature. I said, yeah, okay, here it is. <laughs> and one of them asked me, that what he wants to have his Mac light in the photograph, so I said, yes, of course, your wish is always my command. There's your Mac light. So here's the director, one of the directors of the German crime um, a TV show, Der Staatsanwalt, uh, translated the prosecutor. Here's the director. So I was asked to include the Regieklappe, and uh, I found it a little bit less, not spicy enough. So this is the mainstream way to add spice to an image by adding a shark fin into it. <laughs> so I did it, and this is uh, the one they published. 
they did not publish this one. <laughs> um, this is um, Rainer Hunold, he is the actor, he represents the, the prosecutor and the director, so he was lying on a table and he was kidding, making woo, and uh, he brought shock to him and I was quick enough to um, have the shutter and then when I saw the image I thought, well, it's great to have a knife and so on. I went to the chef to the Nassauer Hof, quite around the corner. He already knew me, he said, yeah, great, and picked up a huge piece of lamb chop and with a knife and said, we need ketchup, but let's make it more bloody. And so, well, I added these two things. So here's the mayor, Dr. Helmut Müller, the mayor of Wiesbaden. Um, Rido Busse, he is a designer, but also a very sophisticated one because he is the sort of the Daniel Düsentrieb of the designers because he is an inventor as well. And what he told me, what for strange and sophisticated things he already developed and created and invented. Um, so I had the idea how to, how to uh, portray him. So there's the Wiesbaden uh, Kurhaus in the background, and this is again from the other side. <laughs> so I wanted to make him look a bit more like a magi magician. Um, so now this is uh, from the series uh, co um, ex uh, what? Corporate Photography Means Executives Look Good. With executives and corporate, I mean also, of course, design companies, advertising creative, but also, um, well, such as Nestle or so. Um, Eric Spiekermann, I think there's no need to say anything, except that we all know that he's a maniac, and this is the way I wanted to portray him, being very focused. This is Michael Schirner, a German living advertising legend, and uh, I asked him to to move with his hands, so later um, did this uh, Photoshop composing. And this one. This is Justus Oehler from uh, Pentagram in Berlin. So when I visited, uh, very often I, I talk to them. We, we, we speak about uh, photography and uh, typography and well, the things designers and photographers usually talk about. And then I forgot to portray him, and short before leaving, he said, oh, I still need the photograph, so he stood in front of the, the, the door, and he turned around, so I did some shots and later. So this is a small change in Photoshop. I mean, this, it's, it's not very sophisticated, but just to demonstrate these, these little differences. Um, this is Klaus Honnef. He's a very famous art critic and curator. Wrote also a lot about, about uh, photography. This is Kaspar König. He was the former director of the um, Museum Ludwig in Cologne. He is a curator and also a very sophisticated mind, bright minded, and uh, artist. And um, so this was the idea. This is Markus Lüppertz, a um, German well known artist. The idea with the co cola bottle is when it was designed initially, um, the designer was asked, when you let a cola bottle drop down and each little glass shabe has to be recognized as a part of the Coca-Cola bottle. This was the uh, initial job. With Markus Lüppertz, it's a little bit the same. If you, no matter which part you portray of him or take him, you, you can uh, recognize him immediately. And this is Batson Brock, um, a philosopher, artist, fluxus artist, like Dada, and uh, very strong in his head as well. This is Gerd Baumann, um, typographer from um, Schwäbisch Gmünd. The traditional thing, the Otel Eicher, he uses lots of ro rotis type phones. So I decided to portray him a bit the old-fashioned way. This is uh, Clemens Hilger from Hilger and Boje in uh, Wiesbaden. This is Klaus Klemp. Um, um, he is uh, with the Museum uh, für Angewandte Kunst in Frankfurt. Um, he is an architect. He has created in Berlin um, a house I've never seen before. You go with your car into the garage, then you press the button, let's say four, and then you leave the garage with your car, and then you stand right in front of the entrance of your apartment. And uh, when I came there, 
I saw the structure in the background on the, on the, on the picture. Then I saw these uh, chairs and I thought, well, if I would take it from there, I have the same sort of structure to make it a bit more interesting. It's him as well in one of the apartments. Olaf Loy. Um, he's a famous typographer and art director. He has created um, uh, uh, Compartile. It's the first uh, type form, I guess, where the spaces between all, all letters and numbers are still the same, no matter if you have it uh, uh, cursive or whatever you choose. So it's easier for when you do annual reports um, to make correction that it doesn't uh, bring your layout to uh, disturb your layout. This is Thomas Höpke. I um, recently visited one of his ex um, exhibitions in Zurich. And later I'll show you one uh, portrait of him I did uh, 20 years ago when he was art director with the Stern magazine. That's also Thomas Höpke. <laughs> this is Gisela Grosse. I was very, uh, she uh, is with the um, Corporate Communication Institute in Münster. She checks annual reports. There's a competition. And uh, she um, heads this uh, whole show, runs the whole show. So I went there to portray her, but I was very tired. It was early in the morning. And I sat there, I was tired and tired. And I said, you have to take the photographs. And then said, no, you're tired, I'm tired. And, and then, uh, Suddenly, all I noticed was this gap between these two tables. I thought, well, I'm tired anyway. <laughs> I go to sleep, and from that position. Um, so an another long-term project is um, to be on the Basel Art Fair. It's the place where it's my second Kinderzimmer, um, as I can say, because my parents were running um, an art magazine, Kunst, later uh, magazine Kunst, lots of artists and critics and they came by so this this was part of my my childhood and um, they had a, they were represented at the art fair in Basel of course so I go there from time to time and work on a long-term reportage about it. this is an art collector he has new, he had put himself noodles over his nose and I think because we have a famous sketch from Loriot with a noodle creeping wandering over the face while a man who has the noodle in the face wants to tell a lady, oh, I love you, I love you, and always this noodle in the face. <laughs> maybe maybe he, was, he was making fun of it or so. This is it's only a guessing. This, this is Dorothea van der Kuhn. She's an art dealer, gallery owner. Uh, has lots of Uka, Zero, and other famous artists. It's in front of the elevator. So this is Klaus Steck. Uh, artist, curator, former uh, president of the Akademie der Künste in Berlin. And uh, planning again. I traveled to Berlin to portray him, so he had no time. It was raining, no light. Well, I took some photographs, it was nothing. But then I read, well, he's opening an exposition, exhibition. So I traveled there, no plans. I was just walking around. I had two shots I really like. This is Will McBride. I think he died last year. And he's an investment banker. And uh, when he drove his car out of the, the garage, I, did, uh, I was phot photographing, photographing. So I got through this light, when we, and then suddenly you get such results. And you only get them when you take photographs. I've been asked very often, ah, you've got to, to produce yourself by taking so many photographs. You can do less. I said, listen, you're a photographer or you're not a photographer. When you already made the deal that you're a photographer, then do what you think you can do best, this taking photographs. So um, I can only recommend this to others, because if you don't, don't do this, then you're, then you're not a photographer. This is, <laughs> this is Rüdiger Grubel, the CEO from the Deutsche Bahn AG. Yeah, I was there, there at the station. The light was great, so I was shooting the reflection, and suddenly he passed by. I said, oh, well. So then I was lucky. I thought it's a good way. Here talking about design or things and taking photographs and that's cool. 
and his archive, I still, I'm still thinking about how to take a photograph to capture the tremendous dimension of his archive in one photograph, but I still, I'm still working on it mentally. So this is one of it. Oh yes, when I was asked to portray Peter Ustinov, I thought um, it's the best just to put him on stage to use the light for his evening show and ask him, well, to act a little bit um, from his show. And this is what he did. So I had a tripod, 300 millimeter, len uh, millimeter lens. And here, here, here I can remember, he said he was imitating an aristocratic friend and describing him saying, he lived in the constant anticipation of being belittled. And then he made, <laughs> made it this way. So this was a great moment. This is Sascha Lötcher from Gottschalk Ganesh International. This is another art collector in Basel. Oh yeah, and he is the chairman of the Rat für Formgebung. This is sort of German Design Council. This is another art collector. Uh, Jan Delay. Uh, another art collector. Dieter Meyer. And this is Michael Conrad and his wife Helga. That's him again in his garden. This is one of the few portraits I still don't know if it's brilliant or if it's not brilliant. When it's long, I didn't make a complete decision. I've decided it's okay. So, <laughs> this is at the Berlin School of Creative Leadership. He talks to the Freitag brothers. These are the guys who are producing the bags from a, a trucker rep or plan. Here, those two guys with a satisfied customer. And he made a very sophisticated um, speech about safety and hacking and credit cards and so. And if you take this seriously, what he said, we, we should better throw our plastic cards away. This is uh, Chuck Porter. These are participants at the Berlin School of Creative Leadership, and um, I was asked to do them a favor just to take some black and white portraits for the website to say this is the way they look like. They said, yeah, of course. But uh, while doing this at Photoshop, I had an idea, and I had here an idea, and then an idea, so I did some extra Photoshoppings. And so these are some of them, these two as well. This is Peter brabeck uh, Marte. He's the, I think now, chairman or CEO. I always mix this, but he's very high up at the Nestle company. And this is the huge elevator in the Franklin Street. This is where the Art Director Club is as well. One floor above there is the Berlin School of Creative Leadership. And so this was after his president's lecture. And this is Tassilo von Grohl Dagmar and Tassilo von Grohlmann. And this is in his office. So now here we're with the flashlight painting. The design of the Recamiere is, uh, uh, was made by Tassilo von Grohlmann. I got uh, very early in touch with one of his products is um, from preparing tea. Looks great. And uh, then later I saw a catalog in a studio of another photographer, and I found out his name, Tassilo von Grohlmann. I say, wow. Then later I was invited when the Barbie doll became became uh, the, uh, no, the 35th birthday of the Barbie doll, so artists and designers were invited to create something. So I was inv invited and lots of others, uh, as well as Tassilo von Grohlmann, so I read his name. I gave him a ring. 
So we met, and then he said, uh, well, maybe we do something together for this show. I said, yeah, yeah, of course. So then he gave me the Rekami, yeah, we're thinking about what to do, so I placed the horse on it. So this is, um, so this is no digital imaging. This is the way the photographs look like when the film comes out of the, dark, uh, the laboratory. This is a complete 3D model from Edward Hopper's uh, painting Nighthawks. This is um, on the Outer Hebrides, a night shot in June, July. I was always fascinated by this huge rock, so I put the camera on a typewriter, open shutter, and then I walked around with uh, my flashlight, my flash gun with different color gels in front of the reflector. This is an homage to Romulus and Remus, seen from the perspective of two mayonnaise tubes. This is, uh, the more you know about golf, the more you like melted gem gentlemen. Um, just one shot needed half an hour, and the uh, shutter was open for half an hour. And uh, so as, uh, take people who went to the army, and they can handle this. This is one hour, just one exposure. This is, uh, ich spiele Barschel, weil meine Grapperflasche leer ist. It's, um, it's hard to translate this in English because you need to know the, the advertising campaign on which this relies. Then the Standing Stones, Banana Armada. Uh, this is uh, in New York, National Arts Club. And uh, there is a huge uh, wooden sculpture made by, from one piece, two lions. Uh, and this is two golden lions enjoying themselves. These are the standing breakfast sausages. <laughs> this is a croissant d'amour. <laughs> and I wrote a poem in French, but I just got shown only five minutes, so... Um, this is, uh, well, Anthony Dvorak entitled Symphony of 19 Forks. Crispy London. That's my parents. So this is my father. Here we come with the sculptures. Um, he asked me to, uh, for uh, use in Plakat to portray some sculptures. And uh, this is what I did. Gerd Richter, Ernst Beiler, and all these Jan Dubuffet paintings. Must be $100 million or so, meanwhile. Kalaslo, one of my mentors, very strong character, mind. Unfortunately, he died last year. He invited me in the middle of the 80s when I came to Basel to stay in his house. This is the bathroom for guests. And this is maybe an unfreiwillige homage on his truckers on uh, Klaas Oldenburg. I don't know. <laughs> Gerd Richter, I was, somebody said to me, well, look, look in the back, there, there's um, Gerd Schröder. So I went in, in the corner, and, but there were three persons, and just to be on the safe side. Um, and that's him, this was very sophisticated for the Stern magazine. Bill Gates came, sat down, he was very focused, and he was moving backwards and forwards and thinking about the answer for the questions, and it was 800 ASA, the shutter, the open shutter, uh, open uh, aperture, uh, uh, 130, this was nothing. 
And um, so when the interview was over, I had a Microsoft mouse. I came to his face and let it dangle in front of his saying, Bailey, mousey, mousey. <laughs> and he was so shocked. But then he took it. <laughs> but he took it, and he was so kind for a second or so to play around with it. I said, yeah. <laughs> there will be more jobs for the Star <laughs> magazine. It's not my last one. And this is, um, he's, uh, he created the, the um, MTV, the founder of MTV Europe. So I put this as a mu music clip. Um, and honoring my short time gap, we do it as quick and as fast as the music clips. Thomas Höpker, this was uh, 20 years ago. And uh, Nicolas de III. Paul Lampe, he was uh, head of uh, picture editing, Stern. Eva Rubinstein, Jeff Dunas, former director, Claude Hulot, um, Gile Kerecki, uh, Franco Fontana, Marius Müller-Westernhagen. And uh, this was recently featured by National Geographic. Um, oh yeah, and this is the, some portraits of Wiesbaden creators as well. Q design. And this, the mayor, is, uh, again. Oh, well, when I was, was in London, I had this cover because you need, you had to, if you wanted to be recognized by art directors for London um, magazines, it was a time you had to have razor blades, the models in the cheeks, and blood dribbling on the floor, and I, I don't know. So this is a smoking uh, smoker's lung and stomach, and and chopped off. I found this photo and, and I created it as if uh, yeah, I created this face. So during this time, I did a job for Universal, Universal with music. The idea was to interpret living rooms. Those, these are living room interpretations. There's another shot for um, Boutique. Flashlight paint. This mistreated breakfast sausages with cream hammer. And this, I did for the, uh, this is the real center of Germany when, after the, um, where when East and West Germany came back together again, they were searching for a new center. So at the new center, um, I did uh, this was a job uh, assignment for the Stern magazine. Um, this is a very Celtic uh, Opfermoor. I looked for the real word, but I forgot it, sorry. Um, this is where Martin Luther translated the Bible from Latin into German, and where the devil's shadow appeared and he threw his ink. Uh, and this is a German speciality, Saumagen, um, together with these garden gnomes. I've noticed I'm quite quick as even possible. And this is Walter and Waltraud von der Vogelweide. Yeah, and he, uh, well, at the age of 18, saying yes in church, and then he died on an instant heart, heart attack or so. This is the gravestone. So this is uh, some shots about London breakfast. was recently featured by National Geographic as well. This is Jennifer Nitsch, an actress. So we were playing around a little bit. She was starring in the movie um, um, Allein unter Frauen. And this is Allein unter Flaschen. This is uh, Faust, Gretchen. Wen weder Fräulein, weder schön kann ungeleit nach Hause gehen. And this is Ophelia Schafft den Abwaschnecht. So, this is an homage to Edgar Allan Poe. Und wenn wir hier das Filmchen sehen könnten, wir sind auch gleich soweit. But if your worst nightmare is being buried alive, then this Swedish ad directed by award-winning Andreas Bayer could be the answer to your prayers.
And this, uh, it's a print campaign for this fiction company. And um, this is, I produced this with Das Werk, AG Post Production House. And the, um, the guys who initially created and founded Das Werk, they were, they were simply, they were rock and roll, these guys. If you had a good idea, creative idea, they said, yeah, we help you, we do it, we produce it. And so they helped me with a funeral spot. In return, I um, made some flashlight paintings from their, from their digital suites. And when I'm not taking photographs, not, I'm doing work in Illustrator just for myself, comic characters, for example, and I bet them in my digital paintings. This is uh, Tree of Life and uh, the Kingdom of Martin Luther's 95 Theses. And that's the book coming up soon with all my stuff, lyrics, poem, photography, whatsoever, printed on demand. But as, at the moment, I have to say both sides, the publishing house and I, were still learning from each other. So the book is short before being published, but not yet. Um, so thank you very much. That's it. Was ich total irre finde, ist, ähm, wir hatten vor zwei Jahren einen Vortrag von Harry Pecchinotti. Mhm. Der hat auch, ist auch so groß wie du. Und der hat auch was gemacht, was ein bisschen ähnlich ist wie du. <lacht> Toll. <lacht> And there's the audience. <lacht> Ich finde es irre, weil äh, Horst hat erzählt, dass wir immer so zweimal uns treffen, meint er. Äh, und ich koche dann immer, meint er manchmal. Äh, und wir besprechen eigentlich ganz viel über das, was wir tun. Aber gelegentlich schummelt der U-Boote ein. Und ich bin für dieses U-Boot unglaublich dankbar. Nämlich so Geheimnisse, die man vorher nicht ahnt. Super, super toll, Andreas Bayer. Danke. Mein U-Boot.